Over the next few slides, we're going to look at uh, the stagnation pressure and how this is applied to gas turbine inlets. So if we have a, a gas turbine, and let's assume it's fitted to an aircraft and it's traveling at a high speed, you know, let's assume Mach 0.8, you know, where compressibility effects uh, have occurred, then what we're really talking about is, you know, air is coming in here, you know, quite quickly into the inlet, and you know, at some stage it's going to hit the fan or the compressor inlet, and what we're assuming is that this air comes to uh, practically a stop. Okay, there will be some stagnation point. So, the stagnation pressure at a point in a fluid flow is the pressure which results if the fluid are brought to rest isentropically. Um, isentropically implies that all the kinetic energy of the fluid uh, is utilized to increase the pressure of the fluid. And this is only done in a reversible adiabatic process. So, um, there's our engine. Okay, so the air coming in here. And we're saying this is a reversible adiabatic process. Well, we're going to start off with Bernoulli's equation. Um, that's it there. But we know that in a reversible adiabatic process, or an isentropic process, the relationship uh, pressure over density times the gamma is a constant. Or I can rearrange that equation. My constant C, I'm bringing that down. So pressure over constant is equal to rho to the gamma. Or we get the gamma root of this. We have an expression for the density. And what we're going to do is substitute that in here to this equation. So if we look at that integral then, here, and see if we can simplify it. Well, we have an expression for rho, so it's equal to p over c to the power of 1 over gamma. I'm going to substitute that in. Um, I can now bring the c up above. And because it's a constant, it doesn't have to be integrated, so I'll bring side that outside the integral to here. And I'm left with a simple integral of pressure to the power of uh, minus 1 over gamma. So that's our integral. And when we do that, we get our constant. And then we get the pressure times whatever the power was to raise to the power of 1. So now this becomes 1 minus 1 over gamma all over 1 minus 1 over gamma. And we can further simplify that. So going back to what we said earlier on, uh, in an isotropic process, P over rho to the gamma is a constant, or PC is equal to rho to the gamma. And that gave us this expression here. So I can rearrange that to say that P over 1 to the gamma divided by rho Okay, so I'm bringing this down here and this out, and I substitute that back in there. Okay, so when I do that, I'm left with this. So P times 1 over gamma multiplied by P to the power of 1 minus gamma. So add the indices, I just get P to the power of 1, which is P. And I get rho here, and I get 1 over 1 minus 1 over gamma. Okay, so if we look at this part of the equation now, what I can do with the 1 over 1 minus gamma is I've just multiplied both sides by gamma. So I get gamma over gamma minus, that should be gamma minus 1. I can correct that now. Okay, I've just corrected it. And I'm going to substitute this back in over here. So this expression becomes P over O times gamma over gamma minus 1. So going back to Bernoulli's equation, we looked at this integral. I now have solved for that for this isentropic process. So Bernoulli's equation becomes uh, this revised equation. So what we're talking about here is uh, we have air um, 
coming in here, you know, Mac 7, Mac 7, Mac 8, and all its kinetic energy, all this stuff, is going to be converted into pressure energy here uh, at this point, uh, the stagnation point. So, there's our Bernoulli's equation, and what I'm saying is P2, okay, at the stagnation point, um, this part is going to be equal to um, the Bernoulli's part. Okay, so there's my Bernoulli equation for the atmospheric side, and here it is for the stagnation side. Notice we've lost the velocity component here. But the Mach number m is equal to the velocity over the speed of sound, and the speed of sound is equal to the square root of gamma rt. Therefore, the Mach number squared is equal to v squared over gamma rt. Or rearranging that, the Mach number squared times gamma rt is equal to velocity of free stream s squared. So I'm going to substitute that back in there. And there it is. So I've substituted for v squared in here. And we can bring our rts up here. And immediately we see we can start cancelling out something. So the p's will cancel and the r's will cancel on both sides. Okay, so p2 will cancel out here, p atmospheric against p atmospheric, and the r's will cancel. Then if I bring the atmospheric temperature across to this side, I'm left with this equation. And now if I simply divide it by gamma over gamma minus 1, so if I divide by here, this will become 1, and this side here will become gamma minus 1 over gamma. Okay. So that's the equation we had. I'm going to bring uh, the 2 here and bring it inside the brackets. And the gammas cancel. So, um, in the previous screencast, we saw that in an adiabatic process, that the pressure ratio to the power of gamma minus 1 all over gamma is equal to uh, the temperature ratio between two points. So we have a temperature ratio here. So we can say that this temperature ratio is equal to this pressure ratio. Right? So it's just expanding out this uh, equation. But we know that this temperature ratio is also equal to that. Therefore, I can say that the pressure ratio, P2 to P atmospheric, is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 all over 2 times Mach number squared to the power of gamma minus 1. Okay, so I'm getting the inverse here. Okay. Therefore, the pressure point to multiplying across by the atmospheric pressure is equal to this expression here. So if we have a gas turbine engine and it's traveling at a speed where compressibility effects have to be taken into account, we can say that the pressure at this point here, P2, is equal to the atmospheric pressure times 1 plus gamma minus 1, 2, the Mach number squared to the power of gamma all over gamma minus 1. 